You see, I've been a programmer for many years. That is for someone who's only 28 years old. But I've had many days throughout that time where I felt like coding was just against me. I'd code for hours without any progress. I'd try to comprehend a problem that was just too complex. And when that list of unfinished tasks just kept growing, I knew there had to be a better way. And there was. Techniques, strategies, tools, and what some might call hacks, the sources and science behind these things, that's what I discovered. The things that have leveled me up as a programmer. And it's not that there's a right way and a wrong way, but an optimized way, a, a more enjoyable way to code. For example, I've been working on this project lately, a project that'll soon come to light, and I've specifically enacted a few things for this project that I've found to address a few common problems. Problems like having your work get away from you due to lack of time management, specified time blocks, and scope creep inefficiencies in your work due to using the wrong tools, and unfinished tasks because you aren't implementing scientific findings. The techniques, strategies, tools, and hacks I lay out in this video, the ones I've learned over many years and have implemented in this project, will solve all of those problems for you and have you enjoying coding a whole lot more. And it starts with time blocks. Time blocking is when you set aside a certain chunk of time to focus on a given task or activity. As many of you know, I use this method for coding, working in four hour coding blocks once per day. But it's how I approach those four hours that's crucial. I ensure there are no distractions, no lollygagging, and no breaks unless otherwise necessary. Why do I do these things? Because it encourages flow state. Flow is an optimal state of consciousness where we feel our best and perform our best, like when a pianist loses themselves in their performance. Once I sit down with the tasks I know I need to do, I break those tasks down. I understand them. I'm in deep thought about how to approach the problem and implement a solution, and I just flow. And I can't do that if something is breaking my concentration, breaking my flow state. It's important because flow state significantly increases productivity as it enables one to perform tasks with less mental fatigue and more efficiency. And the best way I've found to achieve it is through my four hour code blocks in the morning when I'm at my best. To ensure full optimization of those coding blocks, I implement a few things. Chunking, the Seinfeld strategy, and Parkinson's law. Chunking is, of course, the act of breaking larger tasks into smaller ones. In the afternoon, so outside of my four-hour coding block, I will break down my project into user stories, break those down into tasks, and sometimes even further down into subtasks. So I'm ready for tomorrow's coding block. Parkinson's law states, work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion, where when you have more time to get something done, you allocate less effort, so it'll take that long. But if you had less time to get it done, you'll allocate more effort, so it'll be quicker, but with the same result. Since I'm working with full focus during that four hour coding block, the latter is to be true because I'm not dragging out the work over the entire day. Now, you might be wondering, how do I maintain this level of focus consistently? That would be called the Seinfeld strategy. Named after comedian Jerry Seinfeld, it's a strategy of doing something every single day to maintain consistency and create a habit. This exact strategy, before knowing the term Seinfeld strategy, is what I exclaimed in a short video titled, The Only Way to Get Better at Coding. Do it every day. Which helps in another way, you won't have to refresh yourself on where you left off because you'll remember what you're working on since you were just working on it the day before, saving you time. And maintaining that consistency is also made easier when you're using the right tools to enhance your workflow. For one, I mean, wouldn't it be nice to sit down at your computer and instead of opening up Terminal and VS Code and IntelliJ and Chrome and then all of the tabs you have in Chrome like Notion, Gmail, Jira, and GitHub, you could do all of that in a click of a single button. Well, that brings us to a tool that does just that, Logitech Smart Actions via their Logitech MX Keys S combo and macro software, with Logitech being the sponsor of the tool section of today's video. The MX Keys combo consists of the MX Master 3S, MX Keys S, and MX Palm Rest, a perfect performance combo for software developers, and Smart Actions are an integral benefit of this kit. Smart Actions allow you to automate routine tasks, boosting your productivity like opening your favorite apps in your morning 
coding setup we just described, or preparing for a Zoom meeting by opening Zoom, turning on your mic and camera, opening meeting notes, and putting Slack on Do Not Disturb. It has been a huge help in streamlining my workflow, and Logitech has thrown down the gauntlet, challenging all coders out there to create their own smart action hacks. Showcase your creativity, save time, and optimize your workflow. Take up the challenge and transform your keyboard into a productivity powerhouse with smart actions. Advice that I try to live by is just get started. I enjoy many things in life, like coding, researching and writing these videos, reading, working out, building things, but I often find myself in my own head about it. It, it doesn't make sense because even though I know I'm going to enjoy doing the thing, sometimes I find it difficult to just start the thing. This could simply be due to procrastination stemming from various causes or decision fatigue, energy levels being overwhelmed, or lack of structure. Which is why chunking, time blocking, and structuring your sessions are so important to address those issues. But still, this happens. But luckily for us, there's a bit of a brain hack that we can implement. The Zagarnik effect. A psychological phenomenon that implies people remember unfinished or interrupted tasks better than uninitiated or completed tasks. It creates tension when something is left unfinished, which creates kind of a mental itch that's only soothed by completing the task. It's actually something that I absolutely hate, just like having a task just sitting there. It eats at me until I finally decide to get up and get it done. So I guess while I don't like it, I it is certainly effective. So I guess the advice here is start a complex coding task or problem, even if you don't know how to finish it. But everything may still be all up in the air for you. Like how are you supposed to implement all of these things if you can't get a concrete visualization of the project? Well, I like to create a mental model of how my project, my program is supposed to work how the UI interacts with the backend logic, how the app will fetch and display data, and how the users will interact with the app. I'll then use a loose version of mind mapping, which is a visual tool that helps structure information, helping you better analyze, comprehend, synthesize, recall, and generate new ideas. Basically, it helps you organize your thoughts and tasks and kind of just see how they're all intertwined to give you a visual representation of the project. And this typically includes everything that you have chunked out during the chunking process, but I like to use mind mapping on a, a bit of a more broad scale and leave the project management software to consolidate those specifics. But this, like the mental models and the mind mapping, I, I use it for basically everything in my own way. It's very similar to this famous 1957 drawing by Walt Disney that displays how each element of the business connects and supports each other. My coding projects are a visualization of the mental model. My YouTube business is like that of Walt Disney, but a lot less complex to see each part of the business and get a full understanding of how they work together. With one of those things being my Notion template for students, for which I also drew one out to really visualize and optimize the entire template. Which is a bit ironic since this method is putting to paper all of those thoughts of the coding project floating around your head, and this student Notion template is to do the exact same thing with your studies. Have it all centralized in a single location, beautifully visualized. We are in the final stages of this template build that we plan to launch late July, early August at the latest, so you'll have plenty of time to prepare for the fall semester. You can sign up at notionstudent.com to be notified when it launches and also receive an early bird discount. And I'm picking five people who do sign up to receive the template early and for free to try out and provide feedback so we can make those final little adjustments on the template so it we make sure that it covers everything and that it is Perfect. But everything laid out here, this is why I use those techniques, strategies, tools, and hacks in my current project. They just work. They increase my productivity, they enhance my workflow, and most of all for me, they make coding that much more enjoyable. So give them a try. And remember, productivity isn't just about getting the most done, it's about making the most out of your time, energy, and passion. What other things have you implemented in your coding workflow that I haven't laid out here? 
I'd love to give it a try. And I'm sure other people in the comment section viewing this video would too as well. If you wanted to check out that video I mentioned about why I code four hours a day, you can check that out here. Or maybe you'd like one of these two videos if you're a computer science student or software engineer. After all, that is what this entire channel is about. Sharing what I learned on my coding journey to hopefully help yours. I'll see you on the next one.